Okay, welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here to share today. Yeah, me too. Um, for those of you who don't know, so okay, Eleni and I met, just to give the background, Eleni and I met at an event. I was on a panel at a vision, vision board event at the end, it was December 2019, I think. Yeah, right. Before. Before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, and you struck up a conversation with me as your manifesto self does. I saw you and I'm like, I need to talk to her. Or yeah. I need to. <laughs> <laughs> and I was swept into your world. Um, and then you joined the Facebook group. Yes. And my life changed. <laughs> a lot has happened since then. So, um, and now you're in School of Love Inner Circle, which we'll touch on at the end and, and just like a little segue Eleni sent this like gorgeous message so we have a Voxer group in the inner circle where we keep in touch Voxer is like an app on your phone where you can text or leave voice notes and we keep in touch in between our sessions but there's a ton of amazing conversation that happens in there and you left such a beautiful message this morning that really lended itself to the conversation we're going to have today yeah. do you want to tell us a little bit about how dating was before I guess before you joined Fear less. For those of you who don't know, because Facebook won't let me write it this way, it's fearless love. Okay, because you're not going to have fearless love. There's always going to be fear. Um, but you want to tell us a little bit about how it used to be and like how anxiety showed up. So the whole the whole premise of this conversation today is to really show Eleni's journey from having an anxious attachment in, in dating and relationships, which hello was totally my story too. Yeah. and how you have been moving into this place of feeling really secure. Yeah, for sure. We'll start with where you were. So I think just as a preface, because I think it is important, I'm yeah. a person that I'm a woman who likes to take a lot of initiative in everything that I do. And romantically, that was never an issue. Like all the guys who have ever dated, you know, I've pretty much had like Hi, how's it going? I'm Eleni. Nice to meet you. I want to I want to talk to you and make that connection. Um, and I felt really proud of that. Almost like it was my power it was like this thing and it was like refreshing for men. Um, and that's how I started to connect. And what I didn't realize, it was also me being in control. And it was me being the control because I was scared of not knowing where the various phases of dating would lead. And yeah. once, once a man would say like, Hey, I'm interested to go forward. It's like, I would, my nervous system would calm down and be like, okay, I'm good here. I'm good in this space. But all of that interim space in the beginning of dating, that not knowing how I'm perceived, if he likes me, um, if we're clicking and not even trusting the reasons why we might be compatible or not mm -hmm. really consume me with a big deal of mental energy, which is something that I was never able to put a name to before School of Love. So I think that that was a very big pivotal point for me to just name what that was. And it's just, I'm a thinker, I'm an analytical person to just be in my mind, constantly ruminating my next step. And it was almost like dating was strategic. Mm -hmm. It was strategic and it was like a show. It's like, ooh, how can I ruffle my feathers? How can I get his attention? What can I say to wow him? And there was so much going in the back burner that I didn't realize how much I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, I was completely putting my life on hold to just make sure that, you know, kind of like, you know, someone would want to nail a job interview to get the position. That's what it was like for me in dating every single time. Yeah. And it would be like glued to my phone, checking the time. When did he last answer? Has he seen my message? Um, you know, if he has seen it, why hasn't he answered yet? Mm -hmm. uh, and creating all of the scenarios as to the why and initially it became like very negative, right? Like he doesn't like me. It's something that I said. And it was all about me, 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 me. Yeah. And because that was where I saw my control. I was like, okay, well, if it's me in my head, it was me causing the situation, then I would, you know, go in and like re-engineer the situation. Yeah. <laughs> so it was horrible, you know, like, it was really, 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 really bad. And I was exhausted. And every time something would not go well, 
it was just like, well, what am I doing wrong? Yeah. Especially after doing so much. Yes. So much. Yeah. I think like I'm listening back to this and, and I'm sure like others listening, it's like, oh, I can relate so much to the like, did he see my message? Why hasn't he responded? What does this mean about me? Oh, it can be yeah. so tiring, so taxing. I really love that you brought into the piece about the mental energy that it was taking, right? Because it's like, yeah, there's the physical energy, there's like the physical output, and there's also that like mental energy. And one of the things we talk about in Inner Circle, School of Love Inner Circle, is like, it's not just about the physical space. Like I didn't see him for a couple of days. It's like, are you actually taking mental space? Have you directed your thoughts towards other parts of your life? Like how much are you talking about him? How much are you thinking about him? Yeah, and, and that's actually the talking, oh my God, in that interim, in that interim of not knowing my best friends, poor them, you know, like they would be, they would be the soundboard. And like, I would check, so like, so this is what happened. This is what I said. And this is what he said. And here's a screenshot of the interaction of like, did I say the right thing? Is this the right thing to say? And and I would really wonder if I would like tally the amount of hours spent on men that I don't even know are fully interested or committed to me. Like how, in many ways it made me sad because I'm like, that's energy I could be giving to other friends, to my family, to myself, to people who really already love me and want to show up for me. And yet I'm creating all of this. It's like a fake world, like a fake scenario. Mm -hmm. It's a total virtual reality. (laughs) To a possibility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that you said that, like the hours when people ask me like, well, what inspires you to do what you do? So there's like the love, there's a level of that. That's like really centered on me and my family and the life I want to build. And then there's a level that's really centered on how I want to serve. And it's like, if I could take the hours upon hours upon hours over decades over millions, maybe billions of women around the world who are expending so much energy talking about, thinking about, worrying about, crying about, writing about their relationships, we could like power the world <laughs> with all the that energy, you know, like, like imagine what we could do if we redirected that energy. So it's, I'm, I'm really, really happy that you touched on that point because it's such an important why for me. Yeah. And, and I think it's a why that we don't realize when we're in it. Yeah. And, and I think that that's, I think the most frustrating part before School of Love was that a lot of these, you know, a lot of my friends would be, Eleni, like, you know, be more into your feminine yourself. You would tell me, like, you know, stop being so, like, stop taking on the man's role, even though you have initiative, you know, give him a space to be a man. And I like the concepts but it's like, it was still abstract. And I needed, I needed, like, I'm a person who likes to make things practical and tangible. And I needed to kind of associate how something as elusive as like time and energy can be attributed, you know, in that way. And so when, when I started to, to kind of associate like, oh, wow, I feel like I did a log, right? Or just like energetically, like, is this interaction fueling me? Or is this interaction, you know, wasting away my energy? And that has even now started to be a great indicator of like, oop, good match, not good match mm-hmm. as I'm going forward. But it's it's those tangible pieces that have really helped me like, like okay, now I see it. And yeah. that's usually what's missing when I think you're in like either end of the, the secure, but especially the anxious. Yeah, and I remember you asked me a question once in the group I can't remember the exact question, but I remember part of the answer was like, okay, so you have that power. So Aleni is human design and I interweave human design and and everything I do, but like subtly, right? Is is a, is a manifester. You're an actual manifester. So initiating is one of your superpowers, but we talked about like, okay, there could be the upfront initiation, but then like, you don't have to do all of the follow through and like relaxing back. (laughs) Exactly. We both did that. Okay, so when you were feeling, just checking, we're just, okay, let's see if we have some viewers. Hi, Emma, lovely to see you. Okay, we have Ines, who is watching. I love it. 
when it was feeling for you like so much energy out, so much output, questioning all the messages, tracking all the messages, strategizing all the things, was there a part of you that desired it to be like something else? And, and what was that desire for it to be like? You know, it's funny. I have this, uh, this very clear memory. My very, very best friend, who is like my sister, I've known her my entire life, uh, when she, but she didn't know this part of me because we became close when I was already in relationship, right? Yeah. And so she didn't know me outside of relationship, really. And so she, when she described me, she's like, you're one of the most confident, self-assured women that I know. And so I was sharing her all of my adventures since this time, essentially last year that I had gotten into dating and I would share all my anxieties and my insecurities. And she said to me, she's like, friend, she says, what's going on? Like, who is this version of Eleni? Like, I've never met her before. Like, I've never seen you this anxious and, and this insecure in any aspect of your life before, right? And so for me, it was kind of like this beautiful mirror, this reality check and be like, holy shit, like, why, why is it that like this specific area of my life? And I think, and I know we're gonna talk about this, I think it, it came with this sense of like not having trust, right? Not having trust that it would work out because in my past, things didn't follow through right? The things didn't, like, even the guys that I had great connections with, even my long-term relationship, it ended because they weren't ready to commit. Yeah. So this idea of feeling like the universe doesn't have my back, this idea of feeling like I can't trust, I can't put it in the man's hands that I'm gonna, you know, be in relationship, and also never really feeling like I had a lot of options. Mm -hmm. You know, so like the few options that did come, I'm like, okay, guys, it's like, it's this it person happen. or no one, you know, and I don't want to like, I don't want to be alone. And so that's, I think, where it created room for like control, be like, okay, I'm not depending on anyone else. I'm going to depend on myself to find love. And I have all of these tools in my toolkit. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I can take initiative. I can be funny. I am a good listener. I make them feel good, have my nice codependent tendencies. So <laughs> let me like come be this like beautiful cocktail. That's really interesting to them. And they're not going to leave me, you know, but having, having the switch of like, well, why do I need to do all of that? Mm -hmm. And why is it that in other areas of my life, I'm not putting in any effort? And yet the results are still coming. Yeah. So you kind of, you desired it to see if that could apply to dating. Yeah. It's funny when you were speaking, I heard, um, hi, Vanessa. Hi, Tanya. Hi, Ines. I heard you say basically this or nothing, like kind of that lack of mentality. And it made me think of how, like, we also use the other mantra in School of Love. And, and I, I, I offer this mantra for whoever it resonates with here too, because it's not for everybody this or something better so it's going from like this or nothing yeah. to this or something better like if this isn't it then I know that there is something else waiting for me that even is a better match for me how, how far out of reach did that secure so what I'm hearing you say is you want it to feel more secure how far out of reach did that used to feel for you I mean I think, I think I even had it in my head. I'm like, if I can't get to the third date, it's going to be a disaster. Like, mm -hmm. I know that it's not going anywhere. So it was just, it was almost so calculated and it just felt like it felt out of reach. And I think what happened is that because there was so much lack, when somebody actually did show up and highlight the parts that I just so wanted to be seen for, I like latched on. Mm -hmm. So I remember in like 2011, before my, my previous long-term relationship, I had gone on match.com back in the days where we didn't have like smartphones and like the only way to like, you know, see if somebody had written, you had to come home and like check your emails kind of thing and like get on the chat, like MSN style, which was so funny to think about. 
And I had gone through three months of that. And it was just like, I had gone through so many dates and it was like, fail date, fail date, fail date, fail date. And the last guy that it didn't go well, I actually chose, like I said no to him because I had just told him that I was accepted to a master's degree. And he was telling me that he wanted like a housewife. And I was like, do you see how these two things don't match? Mm-hmm. And shortly after I met my then partner who was like literally put me up on a pedestal for being like having a bachelor's and being in a master's and speaking four languages and like being like he just rose me up and high and I was like yes I'm being seen and I'm being chosen for like all the things but that also blinded me to a bunch of other things that were really really important as well that I didn't choose for myself because all I wanted to do, all I wanted was to be chosen, mm-hmm. you know? And so he's like, Oh, he chose me. And he chose me for like a really good reason, even though there was all these other things that didn't check the boxes that were important. And at that time, I didn't know how to like evaluate values versus just kind of like, you know, status quo things that were taught like oh does he have an education does he have a job does he have this you know for me it was just kind of like okay he makes all the normal checklists but like I'm not actually evaluating if he aligns with me and my values I wasn't at an age where I knew that yet yeah yeah okay so to give people some context Eleni's been in the Facebook group since I guess like December 2019 or January 2020 something like that and you applied so much from the content I shared in the group that's how you started your journey it's like you would take what I shared you would watch it read it and you would apply it yeah and then Eleni and I had a couple I would say more so conversations than coaching sessions because we were potentially going to like document part of her journey her dating journey so we had a couple of conversations and now you've been in school of love for six weeks school of love inner circle is a six-month program we're about six weeks in. So just to give everyone context is to understand like what the journey has been here. Can you tell us a little bit about how dating is for you now? And like kind of a little bit like to some of the things you shared this morning and even some specific examples, like some about your, like a tangible examples about the shift. Yeah. Um, so I made some notes and also something came up to me after conversing. Yeah. Um, that I think is a very pivotal factor. So I think that all of your support and information started to give me a structure, um, especially starting to connect with my empowered self and ask like, well, what would she do versus what am I actually doing? It started to help me step into a different persona Mm -hmm. and see that I had progress to make and it wasn't very easy to stick in that persona at first. But over time, I started to say like, okay, well, let me just try. And when I would try and apply, good things would happen. And as good things would happen, I would start to attract a different type of man. Mm -hmm. And so what happened very quickly, as soon as I started to apply that, I started to get um, what I know we've spoken about called expanders. So like people or opportunities who are very similar to what you want, um, who show you a reality that what you imagine for yourself is actually possible. Mm -hmm. And a bunch of very interesting men started to show up in my life to be like, wow, like the guy that I'm thinking of actually does exist so much in his appearance, his energy, his spirituality, um, his personality, our compatibility, um, you know, his heart centeredness, his, his mental and uh, abilities, his ambition. And so it started to kind of be like, Ooh, okay. If I do trust that it's possible, it actually can show up. And so it was kind of like the cyclical chicken and egg where I trusted it showed up, it showed up was proof. So I would trust a bit more. Another person would show up and so on and so forth. So that was the beginning Mm -hmm. of me starting to kind of play with trust a bit more yeah and then from there what essentially happened I was always a very brave or courageous communicator and just like this is me this is how I feel I have very upfront conversations about important things in the very beginning and I used to always hold my breath when I did it because I was really scared that if I shared it I would be rejected 
right? Like I would, I would be rejected and I'm like, oh, you know, like Eleni, that was too much, too soon, too fast. And I think through your help in those times, and I had even asked the question, like, how do you let down a guy in a kind way? You know, kind of like, like no ghosting culture in dating. Something happened where I started to share my truth about why it was actually important that it wasn't a match and how I actually wanted them to find what was best for themselves, all taken from your words. And there was like an appreciation to the honesty and so all of a sudden communication about what I needed and about choosing myself didn't equivocate rejection. Mm -hmm. It actually equivocated me loving myself and me giving the opportunity to the man to also go and find love for him. Mm -hmm. So that was just like, I even feel it now, you know, mm -hmm. like, it was such a release because I was like, oh, okay. So all I have to do is just show up authentically and speak from the heart and speak honestly. And the men who are for me will stay. And the men who are not for me, I can let go. And that's actually a favor to me and to them. Yeah. And that was a very, very huge switch. And slowly what ended up happening was I was like, okay, so if I could just do this naturally, what I'm essentially doing is I don't have to worry about doing the choosing the choosing is just kind of naturally going to happen between us but I needed to make that association of not seeing rejection as a negative thing mm -hmm. right I needed and I remember after the first guy that showed up another second guy showed up also super like expander and all of that stuff we had this beautiful week of like back and forth like we, we were like literally the same person, spiritual, mental connection, emotionally intelligent. It was so great. We went on a date and after a date, he took space. And I was like, hey, what's going on? Because we had been speaking very, very, very frequently all week long. And then he took space and he kind of said he was on the fence. And I remember that was like the first time that I really, really told him, I'm like, look, no problem. If you're not sure, there's not an issue there, but I need to choose myself. So this is what I'm doing. And he says, I can understand and respect that. And I had an urge to explain why. And I actually explained to him that I have anxious attachment. And he responded back to me. He's like, thank you so much for sharing vulnerably. He's like, I think I have avoidant attachment and I'm not ready <laughs> to do that. He's like, so let's just like respect where each other is and be okay with that. And I'm like, we're all just trying to figure this stuff out. You know, like we have to stop taking these things so personally. We're just all working on each other. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And that, that was very liberating. And then to fast forward to our actual six weeks now, I really felt like there was a fast tracking from all the work we had previous, previously done when I separated the difference between expectations and standards. Mm -hmm which was really like the standards are like the what I'm looking for and the expectations are like the how and the when they're going to show up, <laughs> which is totally not in my power, right? And then the difference between uh, detachment and attachment, which is very similar, but I felt was like a step up to be kind of like, how can I just show up and be me and know that what is for me will work and what is not for me will not work. And I'm, I'm okay with that. Because yeah. I know that when someone is for me, they're just going to naturally gravitate towards me. I'm going to naturally gravitate towards them. And there was this switch. I'm like, oh, this is starting to feel easy. Mm. This is starting to feel more effortless. Yeah. I have, I have more energy. And then you, you brought in the whole mental energy. And I started to take an evaluation like, oh, well, how much mental energy am I actually attributing to all of this? I'm like, do I really want to be doing that? And as a self-leadership coach, I'm very intentional about all of my actions. So I'm like, nope, I don't want to be attributing. And so I found myself like, send a message. My phone's in my room. I've been working for three hours. I'll check it when I want, or I'll even receive a message. You're like, oh, that's nice. I don't want to answer right now. I'm doing this. Which is such a far cry from what it was. <laughs> <laughs> so different. So, so, so different, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And 
and it and it felt so good I felt like I got my power back like if I thought that power was controlling the situation power was really controlling my time and my energy and I feel like it's been such a gift to myself and like now I, I can't go back like it's great here you know I think I was giving somebody the analogy I'm like if a guy's interested I'll say hi but if he wants to talk to me I'll be here on the couch eating grapes and he can just <laughs> walk over you know so yeah I know it's just that space of like I trust and I think you had said that too like what is meant for me won't escape me um, yeah. and that doesn't mean like no showing up and no, you know it's like that space of showing that you're interested and then leaving space I don't have to show you that I'm interested and keep reminding you that I'm interested exactly and and also the fact that when you do put up a boundary like a lot of interesting reactions happen I think that that had happened um, in the fall where I had this very this guy that was like triggering the bejesus out of me. And I kind of stayed in that container for a while because I'm like, okay, this is very triggering, but I know there's a lot of growth that's going to happen here. And he was like the perfect container for me to practice taking space. And every time I took a step back, he would take a step forward. I'm like, oh, this is fun. It's like a new tool that I didn't know I can use. Like, what do you mean this works? And so now it's like when you put up that boundary, the guy gets to say like, okay, yeah, she's not for me or like, oh crap, I'm going to lose her. So I better step up my game. And this thing around space, I think is so important. It's not a manipulation or a game. It is like, if you actually visualize you created space, then there's space for him to step forward. Yeah. Right. Versus like, if you're always right there, there's no opportunity for someone to show up for you too. Yeah. And I remember we exchanged that kind of in one of our voice notes in the first couple of weeks. I love that. And even, even when you had a date planned, I think it was last week, and then you oh, threw out your wow. back and just yeah. had the courage to say like, I got to cancel this date and not totally panic that that means you're eliminated. And if you are, but that's okay too. Yeah. Well, I think, I think the actual context of it is really good because I think an, a last thing that starts to happen when you get into this practice of being more secure and choosing yourself, your instincts about who is right for you and who is wrong for you also starts to develop. At least personally, that's how I see it. And so this specific person, I kind of felt after our first video call, I'm like, mm, I'm not sure. And the follow-up engagement wasn't really there. So I wrote to him saying, I don't think this is going to work because there's engagement missing, wishing you well. And he responded saying, I would like a second chance. Can we go for a date kind of thing? I'm sorry if I wasn't very present. So I was like, okay, fair enough. I'll give you a chance. I throw out my back. I need to reschedule. I reschedule. He says, great. No follow-up about like how I'm doing. No follow-up to reschedule on the date that was planned the date that was planned the second time, I at least showed up to say like, hey, I'm still not feeling well. And then he ghosted me. Mm -hmm. When he ghosted me, my reaction was like, oh, wasn't like, oh my God, how could, you know, if I, if I did something bad, I shouldn't have canceled. My, when he ghosted me, I was like, okay, he's just confirming that my initial instinct was right about him. And thank you for saying goodbye. I don't have to put any more work. You know, mm -hmm. he freed me of the necessity to take care of that myself. And I think we are not able to necessarily see in action as that. And I think we need to see, especially as women, if a man doesn't show up, you know, he's doing us a favor sometimes because he's, you know, the actions are as important as the words. Yeah. 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 I love it. You've really been like embodying a new way of showing up in your love life, right? Like it's like an, it's an embodiment of, of this whole other version of you and you've even said like I'm operating from a secure space this is totally new how valuable really is that to you to 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 witness yourself navigate dating where it used to feel like you had all this anxiety and now you feel like secure in yourself how valuable is that for you there's no price there's like I couldn't cry right now you know um and, and it's something that's going to give value for the rest of my life. Mm. And more than that, what's really, really beautiful is that it's not only about me. 
And I'm a big practice of like, just being like doing the work on yourself because the work, the relationship you have with yourself, right? is gonna reflect the type of relationship you have with other people. And I'm starting to see that if a man in his own is in anxious attachment or avoidant attachment and still at a very like polar side, part of me is like, do your work we're not aligned right now, you know. Um, I think a friend of uh, of ours had said something like, um, she she said to me, she says, well, after a breakup, he wanted me back because he felt amputated without me. And I said to her, I'm like, but would you want a man who feels amputated without you? You know, and and it made me realize of it, like it. I think it's it it serves as a mirror. It serves as a mirror is like, and we, we've spoken about it, right? Like then you start to see when others are being needy mm-hmm. as well. And, and you're like, that's not for me because now I've been in secure attachment and I want to find someone who maybe is not going to be fully insecure, but is very close to that. And because I'm aware of the fact that there are these polarities, I can be sensitive to it, but it's not going to be my job to get them there. I can hold space but it's not going to be my job. So it's as much a gift to myself. (laughs) It's as much a gift to myself as it is to like any of like the guys that I date and my future partners. But like, that's a mouthful for me to know, like no longer want to fix guys, you know, or there's this funny sentence that the only men we will ever need to change is sons and their diapers. And (laughs) Uh, change anything else you know yeah I love that okay I have one last question for you kind of like a two-part question okay so we're six weeks into school of love inner circle and it's so it's a six-month program we're about six six and a half I don't know six seven weeks in how would you describe the experience so far and what would you say to anyone considering joining my six-week program receive Okay, so good. Um, So the experience for me has been in in the best way possible, like this pressure cooker of change that I didn't anticipate. Um, And I'm a coach myself. So I know that like every two weeks is the standard way of like meeting up. And, you know, I said, oh, it's group coaching. So it won't be that, you know, like there's not going to be too much happening, but just being in a container of powerful, driven, empowered women in itself is a gift, like hands down. And I was actually thinking of this this morning. It's like signing up for school, but like you get to choose your peers (laughs) and you get to choose like your favorite possible subject. And you have like this queen of a teacher and it's like, you go and every time you go, like something amazing and magical is going to happen. So literally that's what I felt. And there's the lessons that I anticipated getting. There's the lessons that I didn't anticipate getting. I've made beautiful, beautiful connections and friendships. I would say with women internationally which just blows my mind Mm -hmm. and it just feels really good to be accompanied and supported in in a space where we're all going through the exact same thing or very similar versions of it so that's what the experience is like for me um invaluable enjoyable transformative and like i'm surprised as like just what I've learned in this time and how fast I've just connected all of the pieces to why I think you should choose this program is because I think that you're robbing yourself. If you are in that anxiety and that anxious attachment, you're robbing yourself from very valuable time and energy that you should be dedicating to you and and your power and your beauty and your value and really developing and cultivating yourself and that if you can make that transition it's not only your love life that's going to change it's everything that's going to change like just the way I've showed up in my business 
since I've been applying all of your teachings, but especially School of Love, I think like people tell me, it's like, you look like more grounded. You look more empowered. You look like, you know, like you're just, you're, you're luminous. And I'm like, it's all the receiving. It's all the receiving. <laughs> I'm sitting on the couch eating grapes. It's making me feel great. It's all the receiving, you know, people are sending me compliments. I'm like, I'm telling you, once you start to cultivate a relationship with yourself and you realize that all the love that you're seeking comes from you, you don't need anything else in life, really. And so if this six week container, which if you're just in the presence of Diana from like going into her videos online and they're impactful and you get six weeks of her, you guys are in for a really good summer and fall. Like have fun, you get your vaccines, things are opening, <laughs> like do it now. <laughs> like no, no FOMO, but like, come on ladies. Like it's really, like, I don't know, it's, you know. I love it. The energy doesn't lie. The energy doesn't lie, not one bit. Thank you so much. And and I want to be fully transparent. This six weeks is meant to be like a, like a cracking open so that you see what is possible for you to follow up in the six month program. But that's all you need to really, 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 really get started. Yeah. Because we're, we're only six weeks into inner circle and there's already been, I, I honestly believe like if we stopped <laughs> soon, it would already be such an expansive experience and, and that's a whole six months, right? So for anyone considering receive, just know it's a six week program, okay? So you're not going to move completely from anxious to secure in six weeks, though you can if you are like right at the cusp, right? If it's something you're feeling really, really ready for, but what it is gonna do is crack that wide open for you, that conditioning that this is how it has to be. And then you see what it could be like as well, if you wanted to continue on into the six month program, which starts in the fall, right? So if you have any questions about that or even questions about anything, like I'm sure even Eleni, I'm sure I feel like I can offer this on your behalf. Like if you have any questions for Eleni about her experience or moving from anxious to secure anything at all drop them below let us know like does this resonate with you what is this bringing up for you we have a bunch of viewers um and just a lot of love i i yeah. wanna, i want to add that the way you describe that if i were to translate it having gone through it i think what this program will, will permit women to do is be courageous enough to step out of the comfort zone that mm -hmm. there's a different reality to how they can start relating and dating mm -hmm. yeah, that, that's, that's how really I see it and like you know yeah. yeah thank you so 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 much thank you for having me and I wish all of you so much courage you got this and you can get to secure attachment it's very possible mm -hmm. so much love to you Okay, so you stay on and we'll say bye to the rest. <laughs> bye, ladies.